It's all covered in today's China Truths. The Netherlands has just made a stunning move that sent shockwaves through the global tech world. The Dutch government has taken control of Nexperia, a Chinese-owned semiconductor giant, drawing a bold red line in the escalating tech war between China and the West. Officials say the decision was driven by national security risks, as tensions between Washington and Beijing continue to intensify. For Europe and the Netherlands, the message is clear. They've chosen a side. But this isn't just about one company. The Netherlands also holds one of the world's most powerful cards is in this technological standoff. ASML, a chip-making titan capable of shaping the future of global innovation. Both Beijing and Taipei have reacted sharply, condemning the Dutch government's decision. So, what exactly is at stake? Nixperia, headquartered in the Netherlands with major operations in Germany, is valued at over $50 billion and generated more than $2 billion in revenue in 2024. It produces around 100 billion chips every year, the hidden building blocks of modern technology. While not as advanced as NVIDIA or AMD's products, these chips are crucial for Europe's car makers and electronics manufacturers. Without them, Europe's electric vehicle industry could grind to a halt. Yet the issue runs deeper than economics. Nexperia's chips are dual use, meaning they can be deployed in both civilian and military technologies. In 2020, IE Dutch media discovered that some of these chips had ended up in Russian drones attacking Ukraine, despite heavy Western sanctions. Investigators traced the parts back through obscure trading networks in China, exposing how delicate global supply chains had become. But that scandal wasn't the real trigger. The roots of this crisis go back to 2018, when China's WingTech Technology, a state-backed company overseen by Beijing's Sasak, acquired Nexperia effectively giving the Chinese Communist Party influence over one of Europe's most critical tech firms. Western governments have been wary ever since. When Nexperia tried to buy a major UK chip facility in 2022, London blocked the deal over national security fears, selling it instead to an American company. The Netherlands, however, stayed quiet. Until now. On October 30th, Dutch authorities suddenly announced that Nexperia was being placed under state supervision. For one year, the company is banned from making key decisions involving assets, patents, or leadership changes. Its Chinese CEO has been suspended, and WingTech's ownership is now under a confidential trustee. The announcement, made public on October 12th, stunned Europe. For a Western democracy to seize control of a private firm, even temporarily, is extraordinary. But Dutch officials said there was a threat to technological continuity and intellectual property protection across Europe. Behind the scenes, analysts believe something far more serious may have been unfolding. Perhaps attempts to transfer sensitive chip-making technology to China. Under pressure from Washington and Brussels, the Netherlands may have felt it had no choice but to act. The legal foundation for this move dates back to 1952, under the Dutch Goods Security Act a Cold War-era law meant to safeguard the economy from Soviet influence. Critics accuse the government of stretching an outdated law to target a single company. But supporters insist that the danger from China is now real, especially as Beijing tightens its grip on rare earth minerals, which the West depends on for everything from electric cars to fighter jets. In the new era of global rivalry, the Netherlands has made its position unmistakably clear. Europe will no longer allow China to control the chips that power its future. The Netherlands still holds one of the most powerful cards in the global chip war, ASML, the undisputed crown jewel of Dutch technology. This single company builds machines no one else on earth can make, extreme ultraviolet and EUV lithography systems, essential for producing the world's most advanced chips. The Dutch Minister of Economic Affairs once called ASML the jewel in the crown of the Netherlands. Valued at more than $300 billion, ASML is not only Europe's most valuable tech firm, it's the third largest company in the entire European Union. In the world of chip making, precision is everything. The finer the details etched onto silicon, the more powerful the chip becomes. The principle behind Moore's law, the engine of modern computing. To keep pushing that frontier, the world needed EUV lithography, a revolutionary technology first envisioned by the U.S. Department of Energy. Many tried and failed. Intel, Canon, and Nikon all gave up, but ASML refused to surrender. 
Starting in 1997, its engineers spent decades chasing the impossible, enduring doubt, failure, and staggering costs. By 2006, they had built the first prototype. Two years later, the first EUV-based chips were born, and in 2010, ASML delivered its first EUV system to Samsung's R&D center in South Korea, proving that the dream was real. Then came the turning point. Intel, Samsung, and TSMC all took stakes in ASML, pouring billions into co-development. ASML used those funds to perfect its production lines and bring EUV to the global market. After 20 years of relentless innovation, mass production finally began, and the result is almost beyond belief. Each EUV machine costs around $100 million, stands the size of a double-decker bus, and contains over 100,000 components sourced from 5,000 different suppliers. Its mirrors, built by a German partner, are so smooth that if one were enlarged to the size of Germany, the tallest bump would be just one millimeter high. And how does it work? In a vacuum chamber, 50,000 tiny droplets of molten tin are fired every second, each the size of a human blood cell. A powerful laser vaporizes them into plasma, generating extreme ultraviolet light. That light is reflected, focused, and projected onto silicon wafers with nanometer precision, carving atomic scale circuits that power everything from iPhones to fighter jets. It's so complex that even scientists say no single person fully understands every part of it. ASML's EUV system is often called the most complicated machine humanity has ever built. But ASML didn't stop there. Its engineers are now pushing boundaries with high NA EUV, the next generation of chip making. Each system costs nearly 380 million, weighs as much as two Airbus A320s, and takes a global network of 100,000 people to build. These machines represent the future of chip technology, and ASML stands alone as the only company capable of producing them. In 2024, it reported record sales and profits, cementing its monopoly. Yet, with great power comes great tension. ASML's dominance has become a focal point in the global tech rivalry. Under mounting U.S. pressure, the Dutch government has restricted exports of ASML's most advanced machines to China, a move meant to slow Beijing's progress in advanced semiconductor manufacturing. Even older DUV models are now subject to tighter export controls. These restrictions, combined with U.S. San sanctions on chips and components, have severely limited China's access to cutting-edge technology. The policy cuts both ways. While ASML faces reduced sales to China, it's also benefiting from a massive reshoring wave in the West. The U.S. Chips Act and Europe's semiconductor initiatives have unleashed hundreds of billions in new investments, creating dozens of new fabs, and every one of them needs ASML's machines. Still, the ASML has faced its share of challenges, from cyber attacks to industrial espionage. It won a landmark U.S. lawsuit against Extel Inc. for stealing trade secrets and has reported multiple hacking attempts linked to China. Although ASML says the stolen data was minor, the incidents reignited fears about technology theft and talent poaching. In the end, ASML's story is far more than a tale of innovation. It's about power, trust, and survival in a world where technology defines geopolitics. From its quiet labs in the Netherlands, ASML now stands at the center of a global contest, one that will decide who controls the future of chips and ultimately the future of the modern world. Across the world, more and more countries are quietly stepping back from China. From manufacturing and rare earth supplies to pharmaceuticals and electric vehicles, a global wave of de-risking has begun. The United States, Europe, Japan, and even Southeast Asia are rebuilding their own supply chains, no longer willing to depend on a single country for critical materials. Factories that once stood in Shenzhen or Guangzhou are now moving to Vietnam, India, and Mexico. Governments are offering record subsidies to bring production home. The era of cheap labor and global reliance on China is slowly coming to an end. A new turning point in the world economy is unfolding, a great rebalancing of global power. The question now is, can China survive this shift? Decades of rapid growth built on exports and foreign investment are fading fast. Unemployment is rising, capital is fleeing, and confidence among businesses and citizens is collapsing. As the world decouples, Beijing faces a choice, reform or retreat. Whether China's economy can withstand the storm 
will define not just its own future, but the future of global trade itself. In a shocking move on October 11th, Poland suddenly sealed all border crossings with Belarus, roads, railways, and even pedestrian paths. Within hours, hundreds of China-Europe freight trains were left stranded on Belarusian soil, and thousands of companies found themselves paralyzed. With no way forward, they scrambled to switch to sea transport, triggering a 30% surge in shipping costs. The blow was devastating. Nearly 90% of China-Europe trains rely on Polish transit, and now that route has been completely severed. Panic spread online. One blogger exclaimed, Poland has closed its borders. Containers are being pulled back. Is the China-Europe connection collapsing? The timing was no coincidence. Just one day later, Belarus and Russia kicked off massive joint military drills, prompting Warsaw to retaliate with the border shutdown. The Union Shield 2025 exercise, centered on the volatile Suwałki Corridor, stirred deep fears of war. And Poland's response was swift and absolute. As more than 300 freight trains sat motionless, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi urgently reached out to his Polish counterpart, Radosław Sikorski, pleading to reopen the route. But Warsaw refused. According to Bloomberg, Sikorsky demanded that Beijing pressure Moscow to halt its military provocations near Poland's eastern border. Otherwise, the blockade would remain. The message was clear. No peace, no passage. By mid-October, the entire China-Europe railway, a network that once carried billions of euros in trade annually, had ground to a halt, Goods ordered through platforms like Made in China now face indefinite delays. Some perishable cargo is already spoiling in Belarusian depots. Logistics expert Marek Liski warned, if this continues, up to 30% of the goods will have to go by air. The cost will be brutal. Even DB Cargo, a major European freight carrier, admitted the disruption was catastrophic, but said Poland's security must come first. The numbers tell the story of a crisis. Last year, China-EU rail freight grew by over 10%, with trade value soaring to 250.7 billion. But the sudden blockade has erased that progress overnight. Warsaw insists the closure is non-negotiable, not just a political stance, but a shield against Russian aggression after repeated drone intrusions into Polish airspace. Beijing now faces a painful reality. Though alternative routes through Central Asia and Turkey technically exist, both are riddled with logistical bottlenecks. The once vaunted New Silk Road has turned into a fragmented maze of uncertainty. What was meant to symbolize China's rise in global trade has now become a stark reminder of its vulnerability, one border closure away from collapse. Who truly needs the China-Europe railway? The answer is obvious, Beijing. For years, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has relied on this steel lifeline to push its overflowing industrial goods into Europe, especially after Washington's tariff war under Donald Trump. But Poland's sudden border shutdown, citing the Russia-Belarus military drills, cut that artery cleanly in half. The move shocked the world, and what came next was even bolder. Warsaw flatly rejected Beijing's diplomatic plea to reopen the line, making it clear, the blockade stays, drills, or not. It was a public slap in the face for the CCP. Poland, standing at the very edge of NATO and staring directly at Russian aggression, made no secret of its stance. Unlike other EU states that still hedge between business and security, Warsaw chose strength over silence. Beijing, Stunned and frustrated, quickly reverted to its old playbook, mixing threats with promises. On October 21st, Chinese state media tried to spin the crisis, boasting that if Poland refused to comply, China and Russia would move forward with a new Northern Corridor plan. At the same time, Beijing dangled strategic cooperation and economic opportunities before Poland. Hollow words meant to soften the blow. But Poland didn't blink, as the crucial transit hub for nearly 90% of China-Europe freight trains, Warsaw holds the power to open or close the gate of continental trade. 
Beijing's talk of mutual trust was seen for what it was, propaganda wrapped in economic rhetoric. The CCP's statement that Poland's decision would threaten the stability of Europe-China trade was nothing but a thinly veiled warning. Yet, behind its diplomatic tone, China's frustration was unmistakable. It accused Poland of yielding to external influence, code for aligning too closely with Washington and NATO. Beijing's next move came swiftly. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian announced that China and Russia would accelerate the so-called Polar Silk Road, an Arctic shipping route framed as the future of global trade. The CCP claimed that melting ice was turning the northern sea route into a new ice silk road, cutting travel time between East Asia and Europe. It was presented as a grand vision, an alternative to the land route Poland had blocked and a way to bypass the Malacca Strait entirely. Yet behind the bravado lay desperation. Beijing was searching for a way out of a chokehold it couldn't control. Warsaw wasn't moved. For Poland, the equation was simple. Stop backing Russia's war and the border could reopen. Until then, the China-Europe railway would remain frozen. What seemed like a logistics dispute had become a moral stand. Poland had drawn a line that Beijing didn't expect, one that turned trade into a test of conscience. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, Donald Trump watched events unfold with characteristic bluntness. During his recent visit to London, he told Fox News that if Europe really wanted to end the war in Ukraine, it needed to confront the root of the problem, China's quiet support for Moscow. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We will keep reporting on the COVID surge in China, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to get the latest videos. And thank you for tuning in.